Jonas Gutenberg was a German. He spent most of his life in Mali's German name. He was a blacksmith, a goldsmith, and a publisher. But more importantly, he was a printer. A common misconception of Gutenberg is that he created the printing press, or he created movable type, of which he did neither. He simply combined the two together to make the Gutenberg printing press. By doing this, Gutenberg was able to mass-produce books. By 1450, the press was in operation. A German poem had been printed, possibly the first item to be printed in Gutenberg's workshop. Later on, he had to borrow money from the wealthy money lender, Joachim Fust. After he did so, Gutenberg started his first Bible project. Work started in 1452. A few years went by, and Gutenberg managed to copy 180 Bibles, some of them being on paper and some of them being on vellum. However, by this time, Gutenberg was in a massive debt to Fust, which led to a law case in which Gutenberg walked out broke and without his Bibles. Even so, Gutenberg started a massive ripple effect throughout Europe and eventually the world of knowledge. So questions that we ask ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis are, who had the greatest army? Who was the best conqueror? Or even, who was the greatest ruler? And a question that we never seem to ask ourselves is, who had the greatest legacy? When posed with legacy, we must realize that legacy is not just one single thing. A legacy can be evil, good, invention, discovery. The options go on and on. But we also have to realize that when posed with legacy of who had the greatest one, who had the most everlasting, impacting legacy ever to mankind. And to me, that one person's legacy is Jonas Gutenberg. To find out more about the subject of Gutenberg and his everlasting legacy, I talked to some professionals in their respected fields. I talked to a professional in the Rare Books Collection right here in the own Library of Congress. I also talked to someone who knows the everlasting impact on the church that Gutenberg made. And finally, I talked to someone who knew a lot about Gutenberg and how he changed the history of books of mankind. Since there is a Gutenberg Bible at the Library of Congress, it was only fitting that I speak with Mr. Mark Demon Unation, the head of Rare Books Collection at the Library of Congress. I think we place such great value on the Gutenberg Bible, uh, in part because it's the first instance, at least in Europe, of printing with movable metal type. Uh, but it also launches a, a revolution in communication that fundamentally alters Europe immediately in the first 50 years even. Um, and so we look at that book in particular, the Gutenberg Bible in particular, as uh, the kickoff of that, as the starting point of modernity, the starting point of the Renaissance, the starting point of the flourishing of science and travel and voyage. All of that's made possible by uh, print materials moving rapidly throughout Europe. It's a move away from the medieval world of handwritten documents that are slowly transmitted from north to south to a period in which thousands of copies of the same book can flood Europe. Uh, we also know that just in that short span of time after Gutenberg, after the first 50 years of printing, which we call the, the period of the incunable from the cradle, uh, there are many millions of books available in Western Europe, some, uh, somewhere between 20 and 40 million books. And when you think of the impact of that on a generation that previously only saw handwritten documents, you begin to get a sense of why the Gutenberg Bible is looked at it with such uh, interest and value. To understand Gutenberg's impact on the Catholic Church, I spoke to Father Rushkamp of St. Mary's in Old Town, Alexandria. In summary of Gutenberg's effect on the church and what well, truly on the human race, uh, very valuable instruments have been put into the hands of people everywhere through the availability of the printed page. We have access to knowledge, much like, as I was saying now, the internet. And the church is always willing to accept what is good of technology. Scientific advances can be used for extremely good healing and enlightening effects on the human race. 
It can also be used in the wrong hands for great destruction and harming of people's minds and uh, turning away from God. In everything, whether the printed page or now the internet, the church wants to use things that human mind develops in order to continue making known the truth that God wants us to know. And there's a much, much greater responsibility on those who use technology, whether reading the Bible or going on the internet. We, we no longer have a, you know, a, a list of books that are damaging to faith. Now it's entirely up to us to decide, will I benefit from using this, you know, the internet, or reading this particular book? Is this the best use of my mind in order to learn how I can live a good and holy life and thus reach eternal salvation? So as in all ad advances of technology, <laughs> the church will use for good and then advise us to be careful of the dangers. When I spoke to Professor Holt, he described Gutenberg's legacy with three true and simple words. Misunderstood and uh, in some ways underappreciated and in other ways exaggerated. Uh, by misunderstood, most people think of Gutenberg, he invented the printing press, which he didn't. Uh, or they think he was the first Westerner in Europe to develop movable metal type. Uh, he wasn't. Or they think the Gutenberg Bible was the first book ever printed in the West. It wasn't. Um, he's underappreciated for the things as that he really accomplished. Um, he figured out how to mass produce typefaces uh, through molds and using metal. Uh, and by making 50, 100 small letter A's, capital letter A's, uh, all of which had to be used over and over again, this made the printing press feasible. Carving out typeface out of wood, not very economically viable. Uh, he also had to develop an ink that would stick to the metal. Uh, the inks used for handwriting, writing on paper, uh, and paper itself was pretty new in the 15th century in the West, um, uh, would not stick to a metal typeface that Gutenberg developed. Um, it would just sort of roll off and you wouldn't get a clear imprint. He had to develop uh, a kind of ink uh, that was sticky, almost like a varnish uh, rather than ink that had a clear black color uh, and he discovered putting egg whites in the ink would make it stick to the metal typeface. So once he figured that, that out, how to mass produce the actual fonts, how to get ink to stick to it, then he, did, he produced a way that made uh, printing uh, more economically viable where you could mass reproduce the same book in a much shorter amount of time for less money than having scribes copy out each one by hand. So that's his legacy. Um, misunderstood, underappreciated, sometimes exaggerated. An exaggeration uh, that no one else would have ever invented the printing press if he hadn't have done it in the German city of Mainz in the mid-1450s. As we heard from our three respected professionals in their respected fields, Gutenberg started a ripple effect throughout history of mankind. With such a simple idea of putting together the printing press and movable type, started to open the gateway to the Renaissance and the Renaissance. And from there we go to books, knowledge, libraries, and then from there we go to modern day printing. And even today, in our computers, we still whisper the name of Gutenberg.